My mental health issues started really when I was around sort of five. I actually started seeing things and hearing things that weren't there. And so I went to see this child psychologist for a while. And I went through primary school and I did really well. And then I went to secondary school. And um, I started hearing the voice of what I thought was an angel. Around the same time, um, I saw the film The Truman Show. And I started to believe that I was in my own version of the film The Truman Show. I'm sure some of you have seen that film with, with Jim Carrey. So I started to believe that, you know, I was being watched by cameras and people in my life were all actors. And, uh, you know, I just thought, well, this is my life. And But then around the age of sort of 15, 16, that's when things got really hard. So I started taking a drug called uh, Rakitane, which is a, a drug for acne. I had really bad acne around the age of 15, 16. And that drug has been linked to a number of cases of uh, depression and unfortunately suicide in young people. And I mean, the, the drug cleared up my skin, but I was left with these, um, oh, these really low moods. And we didn't have any mental health education at school. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't tell anyone. I was, you know, I thought it was a weakness. You know, I, I realized there was something wrong and I didn't know what else to do. So I went to my doctor. I was 17 now. And the voice in my head had changed. It, it had gone from being this angel, this friendly voice to what I thought was the devil. I was struggling with uh, my sexuality as well. And, you know, coming from sort of Jewish, I went to a Jewish school and, you know, I was told that being gay was, was wrong. So that had a massive impact on me and it was, yeah, it was really hard. But I went to the doctor and the um, doctor referred me on to CAMS, to the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service. But there was a long waiting list, uh, as there is today, for, for help. And um, I kind of missed opportunity there. But I said to myself, uh, I said to myself, I'm going to go off to university and everything's going to change. Yeah, I became really unwell at university and I ended up becoming psychotic. I ended up uh, on a bridge near here, about to take my life. and. Um, I was stopped by a, by a stranger, and some of you might be familiar with a, a campaign I launched a few years ago to, to find that stranger, to raise awareness of mental illness and suicide. Uh, it's, it's taken a long time, you know, I'm 29 now, it's taken a long time to get back on track, and I really believe that if, you know, I didn't need to get to that point at 20. I'm, I'm, my big passion is mental health in schools. Um, it doesn't make sense why, you know, we teach young people how to look after their bodies. I did, I did PE, I did sport twice a week. Not once did they tell us anything about our mental health. You know, I talk to young people now that are sort of 10, 10 years old, and the anxiety in that is, is palpable, and we can stop that, you know, if we go in at an early age and, and, and engage them with their thoughts and feelings. So that's my big passion, is, is, is mental health in schools. My personal view is that we have an awful long way to go. Um, I think we're stuck with structures that aren't fit for purpose. And it's almost as though we have an analog system in a digital age. It seems to me that young people deserve the following things to happen everywhere. You should be able to go to a school where you are taught to look after both your mind and your body. I'm totally in agreement with you. You should be able to access a branded mental health access point. And I say this because I don't know many young people that will volunteer to go to something that says mental health above the door. So you make it accessible and you make it interesting and you make it purposeful. And that has to be digital as well as face to face. Practitioners should be able to access data about the area in which they operate. So the one thing that CAM should be able to do is tell GPs, um, schools, politicians exactly what the prevalence rate is in, the, in any one area, what the extent of it is, who's suffering and why primary care should be an inclusive space to get information and support. In addition to that, the most effective intervention for families, uh, for children between the um, years of naught to five is actually, or was, I say was because it's a shrinking service, the health visitor service. I am particularly concerned about black and minority ethnic young people. I think that they are facing an incredibly difficult, challenging time, not least what I think is a costing of the atmosphere in this country post-Brexit. I'm just going to say it, you know, it is, it is a frightening um, place to be if you don't agree with the mass, basically. And I think that that will have an impact, um, and I think it is having an impact on mental well-being, as is the shift in the way we educate young people. I mean, I think I, I couldn't agree with you more. So I think that, that there's a number of things that we're doing that that mitigate against the conditions in which we might develop healthy, mentally healthy young people. The last time there was a prevalence survey carried out about uh, children's mental health was in 2004, where they found that one in 10 children were, had a diagnosable uh, mental health problem. 2004 was before Facebook was invented. 
We carried out um, uh, some surveys of young people uh, two years ago in a campaign that we were called um, Young Minds Versus, uh, which was led by young people and about young people. Of those 5,000 young people, over half of 11 to 14 year olds had seen pornography online and they said it affected their relationships as well. Over half were bullied and bullying now is like an epidemic. It's like this is just normal in young people's lives. The impact of social media being just so intense. And picking up on something that um, uh, Vic just said about schools and, and Johnny, that again, over half were experiencing school stress. Of a class of 30 young people at school, 10 will have witnessed their parents separate. One will have experienced the death of a parent. Two to three girls have been the victim of a sexual offence. And eight will have experienced severe physical violence, sexual abuse or neglect. That's from the NSPCC research in 2011. So the pressures and experiences that children are having today on the scale of what they're having is really very different from certainly my childhood and my school. And we've already mentioned CAMS and the kind of waiting lists. Well, at the moment, the, the average length of waiting time for your first appointment is six months. And for treatment, it's 10 months. That it absolutely is the case that young people's um, mental health problems are escalating um, because they're not getting that help early on.